Hello, this is part two of the chapter eight lecture series on accounting for bad debts using the allowance method. Let's get started. Under the allowance method of accounting for bad debts, the amount of uncollectible accounts is estimated at the end of each period. We will estimate bad debts as a percentage of accounts receivable. Now, let's look at our prior example. However, let's assume that instead of the direct write-off method, Moonlight Company uses the allowance method. If accounts receivable is $100,000, then we believe that of the $100,000 in accounts receivable, 5% or $5,000 will not be collected. The journal entry to record the estimate involves a debit to bad debt expense and a credit to an account called allowance for doubtful accounts. Please note that this account is not used under the direct write-off method. This account is a contra asset account similar to accumulated depreciation in that it is in the assets section but it reduces our assets. What asset do you think it is contra to? It is contra to accounts receivable which is logical because it is our estimate of the amount of accounts receivable that is uncollectible. Therefore, accounts receivable is reported at what's called its net realizable value or NRV. The NRV is the amount of its total accounts receivable that a company actually expects to collect. It is calculated by taking gross or total accounts receivable and subtracting the estimate of uncollectible accounts. Here is a sample current asset section presentation. Pay particular attention to the accounts receivable section. As you can see, accounts receivable is reported at its gross amount of $100,000. This means that in total, our customers owe us $100,000. We then subtract our allowance account, making sure we put less in front of the account title. The amount in our allowance account is $5,000, which means that of the $100,000 in accounts receivable, we believe that $5,000 will not be collected. Therefore, of the $100,000 in accounts receivable, we believe that we will actually collect $95,000. This amount is the NRV. This method is the preferred method of accounting for bad debts for two reasons. First, because we estimate our bad debts at the end of each period, bad debt expense is recorded in the same period as the associated revenue. Therefore, expenses are matched with revenues. Second, accounts receivable is reported at its NRV or the amount that we believe we will actually collect. Therefore, accounts receivable is not overstated. For these two reasons, the allowance method is required under GAAP. Now let's look at the journal entries related to the allowance method. We looked at the first entry involving recording the estimate a few moments ago. To refresh our memory, we estimate our uncollectible accounts at the end of the period based on a percentage of accounts receivable. Remember, this amount is simply an estimate. We do not know which specific accounts are going to be uncollectible. In our example, accounts receivable is $100,000 and our estimate of uncollectible is 5% or $5,000. We debit bad debt expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts for $5,000. Remember, this entry is an adjusting entry that is done at the end of the period. Now, let's talk about the entry we need to prepare when we identify a specific account as uncollectible. Using our earlier example, John, who owes Moonlight $300, declares bankruptcy, and so we identify him as uncollectible. The entry would involve a debit to the allowance account and a credit to accounts receivable. You are essentially removing his account from the books by reducing accounts receivable and reducing the allowance account, so the net effect on the NRV is zero. Please note that bad debt expense is not used in this entry. As another example, Waterfall Incorporated, who owes Moonlight $500, goes out of business. We would debit the allowance account or reduce the allowance account by $500, and we would credit accounts receivable or reduce accounts receivable by $500. Now let's learn what entries we need to make when an account that was previously written off is collected. Let's assume that John, as part of his bankruptcy agreement, pays us the $300 owed. We must make two journal entries. The first entry involves reinstating the account, and the second involves recording the payment. In the first entry, we would simply reverse the write-off entry by debiting accounts receivable and crediting the allowance account for $300.
The second entry is the normal entry to record a customer payment, which involves debiting cash and crediting accounts receivable for $300. The T account for the allowance account looks like this. You credit the account for the estimate of uncollectible. You debit the account for the write-offs of specific accounts deemed to be uncollectible. And finally, you credit it for reinstatements of accounts previously written off. In our example, the allowance account has a credit balance of $4,500 after all entries are posted. Please note that if write-offs are less than our estimate, then the balance in the allowance account will be a credit balance. If write-offs are more than our estimate, then the balance in the allowance account will be a debit balance. In our example, write-offs are less than our estimate, so the balance in the allowance account is a credit balance. Now, let's complicate matters a little bit and talk about how to handle an existing balance in the allowance account. Remember that this will only impact the first entry that we talked about. The journal entry is to record the write-off of specific accounts and the reinstatement and receipt of payment of a previously written off account are not affected. When recording our estimate entry, which again is the first entry that we talked about, we must take any existing balance in the allowance account into consideration. For example, when we prepare the estimate entry at December 31, 2014 for Moonlight Company, we must take the credit balance of $4,500 into consideration. Just as a reminder, the T account for the allowance account before the estimate entry is prepared for 2014 looks like this. Our estimate for 2013 was 5000 We wrote two accounts off, totaling 800 and we reinstated one for 300 which gives us a $4,500 credit balance. You will calculate the estimate exactly the same as before. Let's assume that at the end of 2014, Moonlight's accounts receivable was $150,000. We will still assume that the uncollectible amount is 5% of accounts receivable, or $7,500. You need to remember that this is what we want the ending balance in our allowance account to be. And the ending balance after adjustment should always be a credit balance. How do we get from a $4,500 credit balance to a $7,500 credit balance? We need a credit of $3,000. The entry will look exactly as we learned before. We would debit bad debt expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts for the calculated amount of $3,000. Now, let's assume that the allowance account has a debit balance of $4,500 rather than a credit balance of $4,500. This balance would indicate that our current period write-offs were more than our prior period estimate. How do we get from a $4,500 debit balance to a $7,500 credit balance? We need a credit of $12,000. Again, our entry would look the same. We would debit bad debt expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts for $12,000. This completes part two of the chapter eight lecture series on accounting for bad debts using the allowance method. Now let's learn about notes receivable.